Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you in this review is the killer, super powerful Sony A7R 4 Now, the A7R 4 is a high-resolution beast. That's what the R stands for, resolving power resolution. We're talking 61 megapixels. Now, that's an insane amount of resolution, and in this review, I'm going to show you exactly what that gets you in the real world, and also I'll show you some lab testing. I used the FE24-105 to F4G OSS lens, and I also used the Sigma 105mm F1.4 lens for some portraits, so I really got some excellent sample photos to show you, and video, because this camera can also do 4K video, don't forget. Let's just get right into it. All right guys, so for the hands-on portion here, I just wanted to show you quickly what the original A7R looks like compared to the A7R 4. Now you can see just out of the box the difference in size. The A7R 4 currently comes in at 665 grams or 1.5 pounds, and it retails for $3,500, but right now it's on sale for $3,200. Now, notice just the evolution of the camera. The A7R original was basically just an RX1 that they turned into a mirrorless camera, so it has that RX1 style camera body. But overall, the design is very similar. Sony just continued to evolve and expand on that design. So you can see from the back, we got more buttons, more features on the A7R 4 of course, a much larger grip, as you can see from, the, from this view, the grip is much larger on the A7R 4 and way better. And you can see the mode dials, there's no locks or anything like that. Only one custom button, the shutter button's here. You can just see how the shutter button has moved to the top of the grip. You got more custom buttons and everything like that. And also the way the battery doors are designed and the port doors are just hugely improved on the A7R 4 When you look at it from the bottom, you can also see the huge improvements on the A7R 4 chassis design. And, you know, that basically was to accommodate the five-axis stabilization system that the A7R 4 has. And, obviously, the A7R original does not have that. So, it was able to have a much smaller, leaner camera body. So, that is pretty much it. And I still use the A7R, by the way. This camera is 36 megapixels, and it's awesome. I still use it today, all the time, for product photography and things like that. It still works great. It does obviously not have the same feature set of the newer cameras, and the autofocus is slow, it's contrast only, but the 36 megapixel resolving power and editing latitude that you get off the RAW files on this camera is absolutely remarkable to this day. So just because the camera's older doesn't mean it's not capable of getting killer pictures, as many of you know, but I just wanted to illustrate that, that I still use this camera all the time. <laughs> So again here, going over the A7R 4 a little more. Now, like I was saying, 61 megapixels is amazing in full frame mode, but also if you use this camera in crop factor mode, you're gonna get 26 megapixels off the sensor, which is really nice for those that wanna use, you know, smaller lighter weight lenses, for example, like the E70-350 millimeter G OSS lens I recently reviewed, which is great for wildlife photography and things like that if you want a lighter setup. Obviously the 200 to 600 millimeter would be a better lens option for a camera like this, but a lot of people, just depending on your situation, whether you're traveling or whatever, you don't want to carry that huge, gigantic, heavy lens, um, even though it's obviously going to produce better quality and give you more zoom range. So that is a very nice feature of the A7R 4 having that crop factor resolving power. Now, on the back of the camera here, when you look, you got the OLED viewfinder here. That is also very high resolution. We're talking 5.76 million dots. So when you're using the camera with the viewfinder, you're not gonna be disappointed with the quality. It looks absolutely awesome. Very rich colors and dynamic range. You could see pretty much everything the sensor sees. And that's just another nice feature of this camera. So the resolution carries through to the OLED viewfinder, that high resolution. Now the screen on the back is also fairly high resolution, but not as high as some of the competition out there. So we're looking at 1.4 million dots on this reasonably articulating touch screen. So it goes down to there and it goes up to here. So you can get the camera nice and low and you can hold it overhead a little bit, but it is not the fully articulating screen 
like found on the new Sony a7S III, which clearly we've been waiting for for a very long time, and it's a shame that this camera did not have it. I'm certain the next generation will, however, have that. So in addition, on the sensor, just to go over the incredible autofocus system quick, we're looking at 567 points and it's incredibly fast, it's super accurate, it has real-time AF tracking technology, and it also features eye autofocus for both humans and animals, which is extremely powerful, and it's also very accurate, as you will see with the sample photos I got. Any, if you've ever tried taking pictures of moving kids with a fast lens, you know, the, the depth of field is extremely narrow, and that eye autofocus is killer. It also works great on dogs. I tested it on a couple of dogs and I had really good luck with it. So that's an amazing feature that the Sony a7R 4 offers that's not really resolution related, it's just awesome technology. And that's what I always particularly liked about the Sony cameras was their amazing technology that you can get in one package. When it comes to the top of the camera, of course, you have the shutter button, you have custom buttons one and two here, you have a dial here that you can use for aperture or shutter speed, and then you have the exposure comp dial, which has the nice lock. Same thing with the mode dial. It's got a nice lock. And then you have these memory modes here, so you can custom program one, two, and three to your favorite settings. So you can have one set for sports, one for landscapes, and one for portraits, for example. Now you also have another custom button over here, your menu button. And on the back here, you have tons of buttons here. You got AF on, which you can use for back button focus. And then you have a nice thumb toggle here, which you can use to navigate around the menu system or you can move the autofocus around if you prefer. You got the function menu, you have a dial here that turns and you can also press it, and then you have a button in the center of the dial as well. You got your trash can, and then you have your playback button here. Now looking on the sides, you got your port doors, so you have your microphone port, you got your headphone port, you have a micro HDMI port, then you have your USB ports, so you have your USB-C here, and then you have a micro USB. In addition, you have a flash sync port up here for those that still use that feature. Now looking at it from this side, this is a little bit hard to get open. You have to push it like that. I wish it was a little bit easier. I kind of like that pop down on some of the other mirrorless cameras, but you just have to basically use your thumb and push to pop that open. Now you have dual UHS-2 slots here, SD card slots, and it's great for redundancy purposes when it comes to wedding photography in particular, or any kind of photography where you absolutely cannot afford to lose your photos. God forbid you have an SD card failure or something like that. You're gonna to wanna to utilize both those slots and have the camera set up in a redundancy mode. Just in case one fails, you're good to go. Now looking at it from the bottom, you have the tripod mount here, of course. And then here you have the battery compartment. And this is a FZ100 battery which will yield you approximately 670 photos or about 90 minutes of recording 4K video, which is not bad. Now, if you need more battery life, you can also get the optional battery grip, which is a great option, and that'll effectively double the amount of time you can record video. Now, when you shut this door, it doesn't automatically lock, which just drives me crazy. I need to mention that because I've been complaining about this feature since the very first mirrorless camera from Sony that I reviewed. You just have to slide that little toggle over there to lock the door. It's not really that big of a deal, but it should just lock when you close it. There's also a dial on the front here as well on the grip. Now I have a beginner's guide here that will go over the camera in much more detail for those new to the camera body. It's like an hour long video, so be sure to check that out if you want to see in detail all the different buttons and features and more on how to use the camera and stuff like that. But I don't want this review to be too long. So I'm gonna skip that in this review, but I will go over the camera quickly as far as the menu system goes. So if you hit the menu button here, this is the menu system. And right now I'm in the My Menu area. Now this area will allow you to basically custom configure the menu to suit your needs. And if you scroll over with this navigation wheel or this little toggle here, you can go into the different parts of the menu. And you can see if you go up top here, you have these tabs. And then if you go down, you could then go and you have pages. So you have pages within each tab. So for example, in camera one, you have 15 pages. And if you go down, you could then scroll through all those pages and just go through the incredible amount of features that this camera offers. It's quite, quite powerful for sure. 
All right, so let me show you some sample photos so you can see exactly what kind of resolving power the A7R4 has. All right, so here we are in Lightroom, and I just wanted to go over the ISO testing images in the lab. And as you can see up here, I had on the top left, I had the camera set to F9. I was using the Sigma 105 millimeter F1.4 lens for this test. And I just wanted to show you how good the ISO performs up until it starts to get noisy. So here we're looking at ISO 50, and you can just see how clean, as far as the noise goes, this image is. It's excellent. In the shadow areas, you could see just the, you know, the gradation here from the light to the shadows and stuff. It looks really, really good, in my opinion, as it should at ISO 50. Now, when we start going up the level here, we're at ISO 200, ISO 400, ISO 800. Let me zoom in at 800 so you can see how good 800 still looks. So you can see there's pretty much no visible noise yet. Still looks very, very good. Now if we step it up to 1600, you're going to just start to see a little bit of noise creep in. And you could usually see that in the black areas, the darker areas. It tends to creep in a little quicker. You could see here there's just that little bit of noise starting to creep in. Really not too much but it is starting to be noticeable at 1600. Now when you get to 3200, let me zoom in here, you can definitely start to see some noise now. You can see it in the, on the circuit board here. It's a little bit harder to see on the dollar, but you can just see that little bit of noise starting to creep in. And then if I pan over here, you can definitely see that little bit of noise starting to creep in. So right around ISO 3200 is where it starts to become significant, I would say. Now if we take a look at 6400, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see, and now there's some pretty significant noise. Now, <clears throat> at the end of the day, because this is such high resolution, you're still not really going to notice this when you're looking at the image like this. Even if you're looking at it uh, zoomed in, it's still really not that bad at all. But you could definitely see the noise here, especially in the grays and the blacks. You could see that little bit of noise coming in. So ISO 6400 is really you know, about as high as you're going to want to go if you still want a fairly clean image. Now when you step it up to ISO 12800, this is where there's pretty significant noise, I would say. Now it's getting to the point where it's going to start to degradate the quality of the image. And as you can see here on the dollar bill, you're definitely starting to lose detail now with the noise. So it's still very good for, for this ISO, in my opinion, 12,800. It's still not bad. It's still a usable image in, in, in some cases, but I wouldn't really want to use anything above ISO 12,800 on this camera. So let me just show you now what it looks like at the higher numbers. So this is ISO 25,600, and you could really start to see that noise coming in. It's pretty bad at this point. And then 51,000, let me show you that. And you can see it's it's pretty bad. A lot of noise there. And then if I go to 100,000, you could see it's just insane. And between 50 and 100, there's a severe color cast difference. So notice here, this is 51,000. Still looks okay, but there's a little bit of a green tint to it. You can see it when I back off to 25,600. There's really not much of a color cast at all. When you go to 51,000, a green color cast almost comes over the entire image. And then when you get to 100,000, you could really see that green come over. See that? So here's 51,000, and then here's 100,000. So I'll just zoom in here so you can see the detail a little closer. And again, you could still read all the words and stuff like that. You could still easily tell this is a dollar bill and all that, so that it's not like the noise is so bad that the image is absolutely useless. I mean, there are some cases where you, you might want to shoot at this rather than get no picture at all. It's uh, certainly better than nothing, but I don't know, based on my testing, I really wouldn't want to go above ISO 6400 for pretty much anything I would want to use. So ISO 6400 and below, I, I would recommend staying around there with such a high resolution camera like this one for the best quality results possible. All right, so as I previously mentioned, I used the 24 to 105 G OSS lens, and I also used the Sigma 105 F4 lens which were great companions, honestly, for the Sony a7R IV. I really got some excellent photos, in my opinion, with these, you know, various tools. And you can see here I took over 1,600 pictures with the a7R IV. 
So let me just show you some of my favorite shots and also be sure to check out the two lens reviews. I did review both of these lenses and you'll see a ton of sample photos obviously in those reviews as well. So I'm just gonna scroll through here and show you some of my favorites to try and illustrate to you just how amazing this camera is and the, just that resolving power, you know, 61 megapixel, what does that actually get you? Well, let me show you. All right, so here's a picture of Layla. Now I took this in JPEG mode because I wanted to show you how the camera rendered the colors in JPEG mode. And in my opinion, it did make her skin tones a little bit orangey. Um, so I do prefer shooting in raw and manipulating the colors myself. But overall, I would still say the image came out excellent. And you can see here just how incredible the detail is. I can actually go to one to two, all right. Two to one. And you can see here at two to one, it's just absolutely remarkable. Go back to one to one and then just fit. So I was very, very happy and impressed with those results on this camera. Here's just a picture of a, a glass of beer here. Let me just scroll along here. I only have the uh, two star rating images. Oh, here's one. All right, now look at this, just a simple picture of a flower, but watch what happens when I zoom in here to 100% and just look at the detail. You see that resolving power you get? It's unbelievable. Let me go to two to one. I mean, just look at that detail on the uh, pollen and the, you know, whatever this is. It's really cool. The pistol or the stamen or whatever that, I don't know what it is, I can't remember. School was so long ago. All right, check out this picture of the sign, right? Just a snapshot, really. But now watch when I zoom in. You will see just how incredible, let me go to one-to-one. -one. You will see just how incredible the detail is. Sharpness and clarity, it's just off the charts killer. Zoom out here. Here's just a picture of a Corvette. Here's a picture of a church. And I just got a couple shots of my kids. Now let me just zoom in here again on Layla's eyes so you can see at one-to-one -one just how sharp. And this is at ISO 1000, so keep an eye up here on the top left for the EXIF data. And a bunch of good pictures. You can see what kind of killer separation you can get from the background when using a lens like the Sigma 105 f1.4. Absolutely remarkable. And by the way, the uh, A7R4 is totally capable of tracking moving subjects as long as they're at a reasonable speed, super high speed moving subjects. It's going to have a little bit harder over time. But if you're using a good lens, um, you know, you it can keep up. Even with the Sigma 105, it was able to keep up here with Jace coming towards me at f1.4, which was quite impressive, I thought. Now, it didn't get every single shot in focus, but almost all of them were sharp. So I was quite impressed by that. All right, here's a picture of Layla that I just edited a little bit here in Lightroom. So I just wanted to show you the before and after here. So if I hit the backspace key, you'll be able to see what the image looked like straight off the camera. And then with a little editing, I was able to pull that out of it. So you can see the files are very workable. And I did this in Lightroom just by moving some sliders around. Um, I apologize about my laptop. The fan just kicked on because these images really push the uh, laptop, you know, and it's uh, it gets hot trying to render these files and stuff. So I apologize for that background noise if you're hearing it. Hopefully it's not too bad. But anyway, here's another one. Layla, you can just see. This one I actually edited. Here's one of Jace. Here's the uh, file right off the camera and here is the edited version. Now let me zoom in here to show you just how awesome this is. I mean, look at that detail. You could see his hair was a little sweaty and stuff, and it's just the uh, resolving power on this camera is absolutely awesome. And this is one of my favorite pictures I got from uh, this review. Now here's just an image of a cross box at work, which is totally insane chaos. But again, when you zoom in, you could see just unbelievable detail and resolving power that you can get with a camera like this. Now here's another one I just wanted to show you. Uh, if I hit the backspace, you could see a reset there. So 
let me put the highlights and shadows back and watch when you pull the highlights down you can pull that detail right back you see that so the dynamic range on this sensor is quite good and you can pull the detail out of the shadows as well so these files are these files are very versatile and workable in a uh, program like Adobe Lightroom uh, it's just a picture of my dad's truck all right here's some more um, I was just doing some more testing and Jace was going much faster this time and with the 24 to 105 G OSS lens the Sony a7R 4 was able to track pretty much no problem a couple more photos here's some cows and stuff just some landscapes now let me just show you here I'm gonna zoom in on the cow fur so you can see the detail and it's absolutely awesome this was shot at f8 and you can see all the little individual hairs and stuff very very impressive in my opinion and just another one you can see the flies all over this poor cow's face on his eye and stuff it's really rough if I go to two to one here you can see all the bugs these flies just killing this cow what are you gonna do feel bad for him but uh it's just um, a cow's life I guess you know alright here's another image and you can see I dragged the shadows up right here to bring out some of that detail and I also brought the highlights down so you can bring that highlight detail so the dynamic range is quite good on this 61 megapixel sensor no doubt about it check out these wings let me zoom in here show you some wing detail unbelievably delicious wings So if you're looking for high resolution food photography, um, the A7R4 is a good option. I destroyed this meal, it was so delicious. And here's just a picture of my friend in the woods. Here's one of Layla. And Jace. Here's another one of Abraham. And these are just basically snapshots just to show you what kind of detail you can get and stuff like that. Now here's one, and I dragged the shadows up quite a bit to bring out that shadow detail on the mushroom. Pretty cool shot. Now here's one of a fly, and let me just show you how much detail you can get. So this is what it looks like, and now if you zoom in, you could see the resolving power again. is just absolutely remarkable. And that's what 61 megapixel gets you. You can almost turn this into a macro shot, you know? so much resolution there to work with just a salad some sushi and here's just a couple of landscape shots now take a look at this shot here if I reset this stuff back to default here now the highlights I can drag down to pull that highlight detail back see that and then the shadows I can pull the shadows up to bring out some of the detail on the shadows I could hit a little vibrance there and then I can there's already a contrast curve added so that looks pretty darn good and that's just a raw file you know straight off the camera so like I was saying the resolution the uh, dynamic range it's all very impressive in my opinion and here's just a couple more shots here's one of Jace proud of himself here's my buddy's Corvette I took a couple of pictures for him the other day you might have saw in that uh, the other lens review a couple more shots this one came out pretty good this was with the Sigma 105 and here's just a few more really happy with the results of these pictures the uh, A7R4 is really really impressive just another one of my friend Mark let me just zoom in here so you can see the detail on his beard you see that it's absolutely unbelievable absolutely unbelievable 61 megapixel that's what it gets you guys and here's a little bit more of a lower light shot some empanadas they were delicious some more food here's an HDR three images combined and uh, rendered this result which I think came out really good it was Layla's birthday the other day. She's now officially 10 years old. 
There's the cake. Happy birthday, Layla. Here's another one shooting into the sun. And I put the sun basically behind the beer just to make that illuminate. And the results are really good in my opinion. I took that with the Sigma lens. Pretty happy with that result. A couple more pictures here from inside this place called Eddie's Road. Inside this place called Eddie's Roadhouse. Really, really awesome restaurant in Warwick, New York. That's actually Eddie right there. And uh, we had a really good time. They had some really good food. You can see here, got some nachos and stuff. Excellent, excellent food. I mean, just look at these pictures. This was a Cubano. I mean, unbelievable. Look how good that looks. I actually took this picture out the window of the car when we were driving. Came out pretty darn good. And here's just a picture of this huge dog my brother was watching. Dog weighed like 160 pounds. It was gigantic. It came up to like my, like my, almost my belly. The dog, the dog was, was so tall. Crazy. Another one. Look at this. He was just shaking. A, he had a drink of water. <laughs> It was pretty funny. Big slobbering oaf. Here's one of Charlie. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see again the resolving power. So you can see you could just crop that image in and make a headshot out of it almost. It's just amazing. Here's one of uh, Chippy. Look at this. Watch. I'll zoom in. And you can just see that unbelievable detail that you can get. It was just a quick. It was just a quick sequence. Uh, I was taking uh, just some test shots at various focal lengths. Yeah, just a snapshot of my kids. I'll just keep scrolling here. I took a couple of Layla. Got a couple of decent portraits of her with the skateboard, and uh, I was really happy with these results. They came out really good. This was with that Sigma 105 lens, um, which really is an incredible lens. There's no doubt about it. There's one of Jace on the slide. I actually went to this place um, called Camp LaGuardia, and it was like all run down and abandoned. So I walked around there and I took some HDR photos. So what these are, these are three exposures combined to create an HDR composite file and that's what these images are so if you zoom in you know they're gonna look a little bit surreal looking but you can get results like this if you're into HDR photography and this camera really did a good job the files are awesome and they uh, render really good with HDR photography you can get some killer results like this and I was really happy with these results and, uh, you know, this place was just crazy. Probably get in trouble for going in here, but what are you going to do? Hopefully not. Check this out. Look at this creepy hallway. And if I zoom in here, I mean, the detail is just absolutely unbelievable. And color and everything. Really remarkable. Here's another room. It's just incredible how this place just went to absolute garbage. You know, the paint is just peeling everywhere and everything. Looking down a staircase, just look at this. I mean, that's just unbelievable, right? Here's another one looking through a hole into another room. Pretty crazy stuff. This is looking outside at the water towers. Kind of cool shot, I thought. Look at this, looking through the window at that creepy dude painted. I don't know what that creepy dude's about, but he was all over the place at this uh, facility. Looking down the stairs, kind of cool spirally type shot.
Here's one on the roof. This roof actually was uh, had some water on it, so I thought that was a pretty cool reflection shot. And then I just backed up a little bit and took another one. There's just graffiti everywhere at this place. It's crazy. And I'll just zoom in on this to show you again the resolving power. Look at the detail on that brick. It's so impressive. And I just took a couple of more shots just the other day um, just to get you another resolving power example. And just look at this creepy, I don't know, goblin sculpture or whatever you want to call it. And you can just see the detail is unbelievable. You can see the little raindrops on this and all the texture. Like I was saying, I mean, this, this camera is unbelievable as far as resolving power. Now look at this guy. I'll zoom in on this guy. And again, just look at that detail. I mean, you could see every little texture on this, you know, sculpture. It's just absolutely incredible. And, um, you know, like I was saying, that's what you get with 61 megapixels, guys. That's The resolving power is incredible. And also the dynamic range is really, really impressive. So you can pull back those highlights and pull out the shadow detail and, you know, get some really fantastic results. All right, so now let me show you some sample video that I got with the A7R 4 so you can see just how good the video quality is on this camera as well. <laughs> All right, guys, so at the end of the day, the Sony a7R 4 is an extremely high quality camera. It's, I really honestly can't recommend it enough. It's capable of doing pretty much anything. And at the current price point of about $3,200, you really are getting a state-of-the-art, unbelievably feature-rich, full-frame camera. I mean, the, the resolving power is amazing. The video quality is amazing. The autofocus system is amazing. The build quality on the camera is just, it's got everything you need. As you saw when I compared it with the a7R, Sony has like evolved the camera and just it just has matured into a, basically a DSLR style camera at this point. Um, the ergonomics could be a little bit better when compared to the Sony A99 II, for example, but they're getting there. Every generation, it just gets better and better, but it's really now at the point where battery life is great. The sensor stabilization is so good that it really doesn't need much more other than a fully articulating screen. That's really the only key feature that's still missing 
on the a7r4 in my opinion and also that stupid little battery door doesn't lock automatically that just bothers me i don't understand why sony has still not included the automatic locking door the a99 II has it we know you can do it sony come on now but anyways like like you saw in this review the image quality is ridiculous the latitude that you get on the raw files for editing is also very good it has very powerful video features for grading video things like that if you're into that it can do 120p for slow motion and just the amount of features and the quality that this camera actually outputs plus the build quality itself really just speaks for itself sony's doing a really good job in my opinion and if you're somebody that just wants that ultra high resolution and you're interested in pixel peeping, getting maximum details for any kind of photography that you're into, then the Sony a7R4 is a great option and I do highly recommend it. I had a blast using the camera and I really wish I could keep it, but I just can't afford something like that these days. I uh, recently purchased the a6400, which is what I'm using now for my personal use for the most part and recording all these videos and stuff. So. That's where I'm at these days, but please let me know what you think of the Sony a7R4. If you have one already, be sure to let me know what you think of the camera. And if you want to know how to use the camera and learn more about the menu system and the features of the camera, be sure to check out my beginner's guide on the Sony a7R4. And I also did a more advanced tutorial on exposure, aperture, shutter speed, manual mode, and bulb mode. If you're just getting into more advanced photography, be sure to check out that video. I will break all that stuff down for you in a very comprehensive manner that will be easy to digest. That is it for this review. Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you really like the video, you could now give me an applause. You can see there's a button there under the video link. And that's just a way to support creators. And uh, YouTube just introduced that feature to me, so I figured I would mention it here. So I will catch up with you guys next time. Please let me know what you would like me to review next and also what you like best about the Sony a7R 4 in particular. All right, have a great day. I'll catch up with you next time. Take care.